I enjoy using a good cast iron pan, so today I wanted to see if it would be possible to make one for myself. Now, cast iron pans are pretty good. They're solid, they're durable, they last a long time. People have these that have been passed down from generation to generation. They do a decent job at dispersing heat. If you treat them well, they're incredibly non-stick. And since the handle and everything is all one metal piece, you can put the whole thing in an oven or a fireplace, whatever. So they're pretty versatile. And so I thought it'd be really fun to see if I could make one myself. Now I'm going to be teaming up with Joseph from the channel Good and Basic and Andy from the channel How to Make Everything. And the plan is to do some experiments with casting iron. And I figure if we're gonna be casting iron, this is what I wanna try and make out of it. I'll probably go for something a little bit smaller than this. It's gonna be a first time casting experiment after all but they make smaller cast iron pans and they certainly have their own uses. So that's the plan. I want to know if I can make one for myself. I'm gonna grab a file, clean up that edge. Need a hole in the side, and I should make a lid. Hey, look, lid. Just like when I built the little one, now I want to coat all of this in some cement so that the fibers don't get into the air and my lungs when we're using it. The bottom made of uh, fluffy material, even with a layer of cement over it, it's not going to be terribly sturdy. So I got some bricks down there. That's looking good. Now we coat the whole thing in high temperature cement. Well, now in theory, these uh, free weights are made of cast iron. I don't actually know if this one is, but I'm hoping it is. And one of the attributes of cast iron is that it's not terribly strong. So I'm gonna try hitting it with a hammer and see if it breaks it all. I might need to use some other techniques to get this smaller. Oh, look at that. I did it. Iron, maybe. Is there a good way to tell? Yeah, but that could be steel. So we're gonna throw in a crucible and see if it melts. That's our test. I'm not sure how much of this I'm gonna be able to break up, but I can break a little bit more, I bet. I gotta say, that's kind of satisfying. Oh, it cracked. Now I just need to break it off. There it goes. Well, whether or not it's cast iron, it doesn't have a very smooth grain structure, so it's not like they tried real hard with it. All right, smaller pieces. If anyone else wants to try breaking up a weight, you're welcome to break up that one. You're going to have to fight these two guys off with a hammer, though. They were just super eager. Are you sure? No. Oh. Took a number of whacks, but That's it, amazing. it gets through it. Yeah. 
Safety first, kids. Safety first, safety third, safety first. Safety in probably the top four. Oh, something that'd be kind of fun to try. I've had enough of losing weight. I gotta put some on. So I've built the new kiln furnace, whatever we wanna call this, and it's bigger and it has a lot more insulation in it. And we are going to see if it can get hot enough to melt iron. So I'm gonna put my crucible in. I still have some leftover brass bronze stuff in here. So I'm gonna get it hot, try and pour out whatever's in there. And then I'm gonna start putting my cast iron chunks in that to see if I can get them to melt. Okay, it's lit. I'm gonna preheat my iron in this little crucible while I'm waiting to clean out my big crucible. The insulating materials that I've got in the inside of the lid unfortunately have separated from the metal. I was actually worried about that happening. Well, I'm just gonna have to deal with it for now, being careful about how I get the lid on and off, but otherwise you can see it kind of like shakes off a little bit. That's not what we really want, but we'll make it work. It worked! I did the things that I was trying to do. Now, we really get to test if this furnace gets hot enough to melt the iron. All right, we've had this burning for a good amount of time and I believe we now have some liquid at the bottom of our crucible. Not all of it is liquid yet, but there is liquid with some chunks of iron sticking out of it. Also, it's mostly iron, but there is still some aluminum bronze. That's just kind of like floating on the surface, I think. See the gold part? Leftover aluminum bronze. Now I'm working on a sand casting mold for our little frying pan. If you've seen before, sand casting molds are not my strength. I've barely had a successful one at all. And this is maybe a more complicated shape than some. I frankly don't have high hopes for it. However, Joseph has made a different mold with the jacket, the sort of mud jacket going around one of these plastic pans. And that is our, uh, that's our backup plan. And by backup, I mean maybe our primary plan. Putting some screws in the side of the box to try and help hold that sand in place. Now I'm pretty sure if you're good at making green sand, none of this is necessary. It'll just stick. Well, there's our sand mold. Is it working? I don't know. Maybe it's working now, but when it's actually time to pour, it will have dried out too much. It's kind of outside my expertise and I haven't put the time and effort into turning it into my wheelhouse. It's still just kind of a mystery to me. Well, as I was putting this back on, I did see a little bit of sand falling. It's, it's just into my pore channels, so in theory, it's still working. Keep them flattish, yeah. I 
have some concerns. Nothing I can do about them. All right, I have no idea what kind of result we're gonna get, but we poured cast iron. I might have half a frying pan in there. There's a very fair chance that when I set that down, some of the sand collapsed. I don't know, we'll find out. Maybe I've just got a handle. Well, I kind of aimed it at the corner where the handle meets the pan. So maybe I have like a little bit of handle and a little bit of pan. Maybe I have a whole one, I don't know. like that was the super thin, pouring, flowing, rushing liquid we wanted it to be added into that mold. I am guessing at best, half a frying pan. Well, we got a significant portion of a pan. Not a whole pan but a significant portion of one. So there you go. Oh dear. I'm hearing cracking sounds. This may not have been a good idea. I made this pour spout. And I was like, you know what it would, would help with the flow is if there was pour spout on the other side of the mold as well. And then I didn't properly in my mind line up, so I put a pour spout on the other Spot, so it flowed in and then out that other <laughs> pour spout rather than just having greater flow in. Who knows, I might have had another that much pan. Yeah, our, uh, our material, all the materials surrounding the metal is not hot. So the metal flows in and is immediate, like from, from this point, it is cooling down as it goes into the mold. I think it got that far ran out of heat, which is like, not, nah, I'm not doing it anymore. What am I betting? I don't know. The pan is there. Cheeseburger. No! I got a little bit of neck and a lot of pour spout. And I think that's all I got out of it. Well, that was not a perfect cast of a, even a small cast iron frying pan, but we do have part of one. And I think I have enough that it's gonna be worth cleaning it up and uh, getting it into frying pan condition to see if I can actually cook something on it. So I gotta cut off all these extra casting bits, the flashing, the sprues, pour spout, all of that. And then I'm gonna try and sand it and clean it up and get it to a nice smooth point before I season it so that I can actually cook some food on it, and incomplete. I'm only missing two thirds of the pan, it's fine. How much of a frying pan do you really use at a time anyway? Like, not all of it. All right, I've got it pretty well cleaned up, but I do want to try and get into all those little nooks and crannies that I'm not able to get with my grinder here. And to do that, I'm going to put it in a sandblaster and try and clean it up like that. All 
right, that is all nicely sandblasted. That worked really well. It looks so much cleaner now. So now it is time to season it. That is the process that takes a pan from looking like this to looking like this. We're gonna put oil on it and apply heat. And we're gonna do that by putting it in the oven till it gets hot, putting a very thin layer of oil on the outside of it, put it back in the oven for an hour or so to let all of that oil polymerize and really bake on. And then we're gonna do that several times. So we're gonna try and get like four or five layers onto this piece of pan. And once we've got that on, it should be ready for a cook test. All right, I've done my seasoning and it's kind of interesting how it went. There's a lot of tiny little pores in the surface of the metal that seems to have sort of pulled oil in. And so on those spots, I'm not sure how thick of a coating I got. That's hardly the biggest problem I have with this pan. I'm gonna try it. I've got an outdoor stove. It's the only gas powered stove I have. I'm gonna try cooking a few different things on my high quality and totally complete cast iron skillet. See how that goes. Turn this on and let my pan preheat a little bit while I prepare for the first course of my meal. It's really bright out here today, so it's probably hard to see that the stove is on, but the stove is on. All right, we have an appropriately sized portion of steak here. I'm gonna prepare that with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Let that get a nice sear on one side. Ooh, I can smell it, it actually smells pretty good. That's the cast iron pan that's doing that. That's why it smells so good because of how well the pan is made. Love it. Oh, look at that gorgeous medium, I don't know, it's hard to tell. We're gonna say it's a medium rare. Eating the first thing cooked in my homemade cast iron pan. It's amazingly good. Of course, it was like an American Wagyu steak with good seasonings on it, so of course it's good, but it turned out really good. Well, that steak turned out so freaking good. I gotta try a couple more things. I cannot be the first person in history to have done this. Like I guarantee you someone else has used a screwdriver as their cooking implement with bacon. Alright, that's looking real close. Got my egg spinning here a little bit. Alright, let's get myself a scoop of egg. Going for a uh, for scrambled. Look at that, look how easily that slid right off that surface. Cooked egg, sliding, the true test of a pan. Ignore the fact that it was literally swimming in bacon grease. It, it was perfect. And steak grease. Look at that meal, that is fit for a very small king. You know, I don't think it would take more than 60 of those, you know? So it's a pretty reasonable way to cook breakfast when you think about it. You just start at like six in the morning and then by like mm, two in the afternoon, you're done with breakfast. Ugh. So, in an effort to make my own cast iron pan, this was my result. This was, uh, technically this is actually like my third or fourth attempt after everything we did with Good and Basic and uh, How to Make Everything. But this is the best result I got on my, on my first day or two of attempting. So what do you guys think? Is this something you would like to see me pursue more? Like figuring out how to actually go about making a fully functional, not that this isn't, but a more fully functional cast iron pan, maybe a larger size? I am glad that I got this. I'm glad that it does work as much as it does. But I think it would be interesting to, to go farther with it and see what it takes to make a fully functioning one. Now, 
I don't think I have the capability to melt the iron enough, whether or not I have a good mold or not. So I'd have to do some research into how else to melt iron, how to heat it up hotter so that it stays nice and molten so it flows better in my mold. Obviously there's some stuff I need to work out with the mold making itself. My green sand recipe struggles quite a bit. But is it worth it? Should I do it? Do you guys want to see me do more iron casting? It's something I can look into. Debatable levels of success notwithstanding, this was a ton of fun, so thank you guys for joining me. Thank you to Joseph from Good and Basic, thank you to Andy from How to Make Everything. It was super fun teaming up with them. Of course, if you haven't seen their channels, you should definitely go check them out. And as always, a huge thank you shout out to everyone supporting me on Patreon. Your support means the world to me. I could not do this without you guys, and if you're interested in joining my Patreon supporters, the link for that is down in the description. See you next time.